Well, how many you came expecting something to happen? Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, something powerful is fixing to happen in this place. Tell him, say, I challenge you to do what the preacher says right now. Turn to somebody else and tell him, I challenge you to do what the preacher says right now. Say, God is fixing to change your life forever. Tell them, say, God's going to bless your family, your kids, your home, your church, your city. Tell them, say, you do what the preacher says, and you're going to be blessed. God filled over just about 80 people with the Holy Ghost already today about 30 have been baptized in Jesus name and as we begin that song these are the days of Elijah I just begin to feel like the Lord was saying it's my turn you you got to give something back to me I've been given all day and now I'm just looking for somebody who can realize that I have poured out to you now it's your turn to pour out to him you can't just receive Look at your neighbor and say, we can't just receive. Go ahead and shake them. If they didn't really respond the way you thought they should, push them a little bit and say, hey, you can't just receive. You got to give something when you get what we got. Mm, feels like something's about to break loose in this place, doesn't it? Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Luke chapter 6. And verse 38, and then we'll look at Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. The Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You better look at somebody and say, you better do something tonight. Look at somebody and say, he did it already. You better do something now. You say, it's your turn. Say, it's your turn. I love God's economy. How many of you love God's economy? Look at your neighbor, say, God's eco economy just works. Tell them, say, God's economy just works. Y'all are thinking, man, we didn't think we are going here tonight. What's going on with this preacher? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I 
I want to preach to you for just a few moments tonight before this place explodes I want to preach to you you can't outgive God you can't outgive God and if you believe that I want you to just test that for a moment with your praise just with your praise just start shouting and clapping and leaping and come on why don't you see if you can out give him with your praise somebody shout Oh, come on, do it some more. Come on and give, 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 give your praise, give your worship, give your clap, give your shout, give your dance, give your Holy Ghost. Let it flow out of you. something's happening go ahead and stir that a little bit more just stir it up go ahead and stir it up give and it shall be given unto you press down shaking together and running over shall men give in your bosom Something spiritual, something supernatural is being born right now. Something supernatural is being born right now. Before you're seated, I want you to look about three people in the eye and shake their hand, and I want you to tell them, say, in just a few moments, you better obey God. Come on, tell somebody, say, you better obey God. You better obey God. Come on. Revival is tied to your obedience. Come on. Revival is tied to your sacrifice. Revival is tied to your offering. Come on, somebody. You ought to shout for just a moment like you want a revival that's bigger than these walls. Come on, just wave. Offer up a wave offering to the Lord. It just, it just feels like something is happening. You ought to offer up a wave offering. You may be seated. I, I can remember the moment God changed my life it was at a general conference service maybe about 18 years ago and I I remember something supernatural was happening in that meeting and there was such a move of the Holy Ghost and I I can remember when a spirit of giving began to sweep over that congregation and I was standing on the platform with a whole bunch of missionaries when somebody said I challenge everybody in this room to give an offering of ten thousand dollars what are you laughing for you got that was a nervous laugh you you got nervous like you thought I was gonna ask everybody to give ten thousand tonight that was a nervous laugh but if you got it you ought to give it 
I was on the platform. My wife was in the nosebleed section with some of her friends talking, I'm sure. And man, the Holy Ghost was moving on me. And I, I was feeling like I needed to give 10000 And we, we didn't have 10000 And I, I got my cell phone out and started trying to call my wife. And my wife knows me real well. And so she was trying to call me while I was trying to call her. And I was calling to say, the Lord hath said. And she was trying to call me to say, the Lord hath not said. And like with every healthy marriage, I assumed that silence was affirmation. How many of men know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it's best not to ask a lot of questions. Silence from my phone seemed to say to me, she wants to give 10000 also. Hallelujah. And I, I got out our checkbook and I, I wrote a check for 10000 But in the, the memo section, I said, you better hold this a couple weeks until I figure things out. I carried that check down to the altar and my wife met me down there. I was crying because God had moved on my heart. And she was crying because God had moved on my heart. And we stood at that altar and cried together and left that $10,000 check that would definitely bounce on the altar. But it was, a, it was an act of faith. We knew that God was moving on everybody to give, and we wanted to be a part of it. And we didn't know where the money was going to come from. We didn't know how we were going to get it. We didn't know when it was going to happen. But we just believed that if we would just give by faith, that God would take care of the rest. And so we laid that check down. We shouted and prayed together. Went on that next Sunday to our next service, and oh, it was a great move the Holy Ghost about 50 people got the Holy Ghost again and at the end of the service an older man came to me and he said son he said I don't know why but the Holy Ghost tells me you've written a check you can't cash I started crying immediately Bishop I said, yes, sir. He said, let me take care of that for you. He turned around. He started writing a check, but I didn't tell him what I needed. He just started writing. All of a sudden, he reached over and said, this should double what you pledge you made. I looked at that check. It was $20,000. <laughs> In less than 24 hours, the gift of faith had begun to operate and God began to move in a second. Twenty thousand. I wrote. I turned that check into headquarters immediately. And you know what we did with the rest of that? We put it in the missions fund and started taking missionaries. We just this month took on our twenty-first missionary. My wife and I. We now, my wife and I, missionaries now partner with twenty-one missionaries at a thousand dollars a month. What I'm trying to tell you is you cannot outgive God when you just take a leap of faith and you say, okay, God, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe in the vision of my pastor, and I, I want to pay off that building. And 25000 that's nothing here tonight. We could pay that building off right here tonight if we would just obey God. All it takes is somebody here that has faith in God's economy and will say, Lord, I don't want to just give an offering. I want to give a sacrifice tonight. I want to give more than I've ever given before. I'm willing to make a pledge. I'm willing to make a promise that maybe I can't cash tonight, but you better believe that I believe that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. 
I was just last week in North Carolina, and I was, uh, oh, I don't know where I was. It, oh, yes, I do. I think I do. Uh, Maybe I was in Jacksonville, North Carolina, maybe something like that, anyhow. I was in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and, and oh, we had such an incredible service, and the Holy Ghost started moving, and there was a, a young Marine. He was about 23 years old, and he had been saving up a lot of money to buy a motorcycle, like a Marine needs a motorcycle, and, and he, was, he was saving money for a motorcycle, and uh, boy, in the middle of that service the Holy Ghost began to move on that man and he came to his pastor and said pastor I want to give an offering tonight I need to go out and get that offering pastor looked at him and said son well if you want to give like 20 bucks or so I'll just give it to you myself you can give it back to me later he said pastor I don't want to give like that I want to give a sacrifice he said just give me a minute keep the preacher here he drove home had stored $2,000 in his mattress. Came back to the church office 45 minutes later. Walked in the door and said, I need a blessing from God more than I need a motorcycle. He said, go on and start churches, preacher. He hands me $2,000. Pastor said, are you serious? You're trying to buy a motorcycle and you've been saving for it? He said, yes. He said, hold on a minute. I just got a phone call five minutes ago from a guy who wanted to give his motorcycle away as an offering to somebody. He said, let me make a phone call in that office he called this man the man had the same bike with lower miles that he was gonna spend his money on but he gave it to God and God said I'll make it up to you oh come on you ought to get on your feet and clap your hands and say I believe in God's economy I remember being in Malawi, and I, oh, Bishop, if you'd have been there, it would have been embarrassing. We, uh, we had a really rough time this year, and of course, we had a lot of people get the Holy Ghost, like I told you. Uh, about 980 people got the Holy Ghost, and that was wonderful. But in the last night of the conference, we, we began to just the Holy Ghost moved in a way for us to, to give sacrificially. And I'm going to tell you, people started coming and bringing. And you, you know they don't have locks on their houses. They, they live in little huts in Malawi. And so they bring everything special to them, and they bring it to church with them. So people were bringing their pots their pans, their cups, their shoes, their ties, their whatever they had, they were bringing it and laying it on the altar for the ministry to sell for the work of the ministry. There was a very poor pastor in the crowd. All of them are poor, but this man was exceptionally poor, and he was so poor. He, he, he did something, I, uh, and don't, don't get all freaky on me, okay? And don't, don't think I'm weird. I'm, I'm actually probably one of the most conservative guys you'll ever meet, but, but it just got away from us, Bishop. Things got away from us in that service, and this poor pastor started coming up the aisle, and as he was coming up the aisle, he was unbuttoning his only dress shirt, and he, he brought his dress shirt and laid it on the altar and when when he laid his dress shirt on the altar something got a hold of me and I I just felt great conviction and I I said hold on a minute preacher you can't go home without a dress shirt let me give you mine and I I took my dress shirt off in Malawi and I I said here this one's probably better than the one you had on and he, he started putting it on and started buttoning it and tears started streaming down his face and all of a sudden he started making his way down the aisle and then he turned around and started coming back and I didn't know what was going on and he got down there and he started asking for my attention and a translator came over and he said this is mine right I said yes that's your dress shirt you keep it that's your blessing he said this is worth more money than I make in a year he said I'd rather give it to God he started taking off my dress shirt and laid my dress shirt on the altar well before we knew what was going on the preachers were leaving their ties and dress shoes and belts and everything they had that they cherished 
was all of a sudden laying on this altar. I, I had an 18-year wedding anniversary watch, and all of a sudden I started taking it off, and one of those preachers I was with came up behind me and said, Brother Robinette, please don't do that. Please don't do that. I took that watch and I, I dropped it in the pile and I said, you know what? That's, that'll do great for the work of the Lord. If you got something you can give, let's come and give it right now. People started bringing cell phones and watches and man, before we knew what happened, it was this massive, miraculous offering. The biggest offering they'd ever had in the nation of Malawi. Well, out of that offering came a miracle revival. Churches started exploding across the that northern territory out of that sacrifice came an offering a revival that was so big and so mighty that churches were opening in cities that didn't even have preachers our bus driver didn't even have the Holy Ghost, had no idea about the Holy Ghost. But when he saw the spirit of giving, our bus driver came over and took his cell phone out and dropped it down in the pile and took his watch off and dropped it in the pile and took his belt off, put it in the pile, took his tie off, put it in the pile. And the moment that he did that, all of a sudden, he just fell on his knees like this, lifted up his head, and instantly he started speaking speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. We took him back to the lake that night, baptized him in the only saving name of Jesus. What I'm trying to say to you tonight is this. You just got to love God's economy. If you'll just give, if you'll just, you'll just say, I don't care what anybody says, what anybody thinks. I don't love this watch more than I love God's revival. I don't love my car, my motorcycle, my whatever. If you just gave by faith tonight let me tell you something on our deputation something miraculous happened last year uh, the same when my daughter got the Holy Ghost in Sugarland Texas it's amazing my daughter we arrived at this uh, this uh, Springfield Inn and Suites and when we got there we had been on the phone I was on the phone with brother Sayers again and when I was talking to brother Sayers brother Sayers said he said oh he said brother Robinette he said it's camp time and we've got about five kids that want to go to camp but our church can't afford to send them to camp he said brother Robinette we're just gonna have no kids from Geneva and I said, well, that's not going to work. I said, you tell me right now what you need to send those kids to camp, and I will send it to you myself. He said, well, Bishop, he said, we, we, we need about 500 euro. I said, 500 euro it is. You tell those kids to go to camp, I'll find a way to get the district the money. And I hung up the phone, and my wife was next to me, and she said, she said, darling, where are we going to get 500 euro? And I, I said, well, I don't know, but God's going to give it to us. You watch. And we got to that Springfield Inn and Suites and came walking in, and we had a, a pizza with us, and we were going to eat it on the patio right before church. And we started eating that pizza, and there was a man sitting about 50 feet away who was sitting on the same patio and all of a sudden that man got up walked over to us and said I have been waiting for you all day long what took you so long I said excuse me sir he said the Lord told me you needed 500 euro I'm here for you he goes over to his car reaches in the trunk of his car, pulls out a paper bag, and pulls out 500 euro bills in Sugarland, Texas. Pulls out 500 euro, lays it on the table and said, is this the pledge you made? I said, yes, sir. He said, that's what God said. He said, tell your man it's taken care of. I said, okay. He walks away, goes back and sits down, and then he comes back and says, hold on a minute. He said, you're getting ready to buy a building, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. We're trying to buy the first building ever bought in the German-speaking nations. In 43 years of missionary service, they've never owned a building, but we're going to buy one this year. And he said, don't worry. I got a plan. 
I said, you got a plan. He said, let me get something out of my trunk. He goes back to his trunk and comes back with $5,000. He said, let this just be a part of it. He said, but I'm going to be giving you a lot more than that. I've got news for you. You can't out pledge God. You can't out give God. If you just have a little bit of faith tonight and say, God, I'm going to give something like I've never given before. I want to make a sacrificial offering in this church tonight. I got news for you. You're going to walk out those doors and angels are going to be carrying you money. I was with Brother Stark in Columbus, Ohio. Right before deputation started, and there's a, their church is a very unique church. They are very gifted in the vocal gifts of the Spirit. And they, uh, Brother Stark is, of course, very, very powerful in that, that, that realm of the gifts of the Spirit. And he, he uh, of course, imparts it to his next generation. And they, there's a young man in his church named Brother Russell. And Brother Russell is uh, very sensitive in the vocal gifts of the Spirit. And he, 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 he I was there on a Friday right before deputation deputation started and and brother brother stark when i got there he said brother robinette we just want to be a blessing to you he said we don't want you to struggle on this deputation most missionaries i know you don't know this but they come home for deputation for two years and they have to buy a car to travel on deputation and then try to sell it again when they leave deputation and oftentimes they go back to their field still paying a car payment because nobody will buy a car with 180,000 miles on it Well, I get there to Columbus, Ohio. Church uh, tells me, hey, we got some blessings we want to give to you. And I said, I said, okay. And uh, I, uh, uh, they said, but we want you to come to our Saturday night prayer meeting. And we want you to sit in a chair in, in the middle of the sanctuary. And we're going to walk around and pray. And when we've got prophetic words for you, we're going to come up and grab your feet. And we're going to prophesy over you. Now, if you think that's normal, that's fine. I thought it was weird. I was a little bit weirded out by it. I didn't want to sit in the middle of a sanctuary. What do you do with your hands, right? You're, you know, do you pray? Do you not pray? I didn't know what to do. And so I, I'm sitting there in the middle of the sanctuary. People are walking around me in circles. And they're, they're, they're praying and they're speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden, Brother Russell comes and gets on his knees and grabs my feet and starts prophesying. He said, every time you walk through an airport, somebody's going to put money in your pocket. I said, okay, amen, right? I was like, yeah, let's do this. But that's a little specific, you know. If it doesn't happen, you're in trouble, buddy. In the Old Testament, they kill you. You know, this is a big deal, you know. It's not like God's going to bless you. It's like you go into an airport, somebody better give you money. It's that simple, you know. And so he said, every time you walk in an airport on deputation, somebody's going to give you money that you don't even know. Then he said, he said, another thing that's going to happen to you, he said, Monday morning, you're going to get on the shuttle bus to take you to the airport. When you get on that shuttle bus, there's going to be a man speaking German sitting in, in the shuttle bus in a suit and tie. He's going to be speaking German, and that man is going to open doors for you in the German-speaking nations that's going to make a way for you to buy a building. That's a prophecy. That is a prophecy. That's not just a, mm, the Holy Ghost is moving on you right now. It's a prophecy. So I was sitting there taking it all in. And well, Monday morning, well, that's not what I was telling you first. I was telling you about the blessing. When Sunday night ended, Brother Stark brought me outside. He said, we don't want you to buy a car and be worried. He said, here's the keys to your new Lexus. He said, we bought you a Lexus to travel on deputation in so that you don't have to worry about buying a car and getting back to the field and not, not having somebody that will buy it from you. So, so he gives me this beautiful, all leather, all powered, tricked out Lexus that probably would not have slid off the road out here. And it was, it was something amazing. And then Monday... 
I had to leave it there because I was flying back to the field and I didn't have time to deal with things. And so I, I left it there at, the, at that church and uh, they were going to get it all ready for me. And I, I got back on the plane and I, or I got on the shuttle bus to go to the airport. I get on the shuttle bus. There's a man in a black suit, a black tie, a white dress shirt, and he's speaking German in the telephone. He's speaking all this professional, political German. Couldn't figure it all out. I'm, I can speak pretty fluent, you know, church German, but, but the political stuff was different, and I, I was listening, and I, I, I waited till he hung up the phone, and I finally started speaking to him in German, and when I started speaking to him in German, he, he, said, he said, hold on a minute, you're a Pentecostal, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, I just prayed last night that God would put a Pentecostal on my shuttle bus because I'm trying to reach young people in Germany, Austria, Lichtenstein, Einstein in Switzerland and I need a pastor that believes the truth that will partner with me to reach these German speaking nations I said well I said what do you do sir he said I am the personal security guard for the prime minister I train all of the all of the the politicians security details in Germany Austria Liechtenstein Switzerland in Norway he said I'm on my way right now to meet with the prime minister to talk to him about my desire to reach young people in the German speaking nations he said what's your greatest need I said, man, I need a building. I said, we can't find a building. It costs too much. He said, listen, brother. He said, I'm a gift from God to you. He said, I'm going to find a way to help you find the very first Pentecostal church building in the German-speaking nations. We prayed together on that bus. We've been in contact ever since. I don't know when God's going to do it, how God's going to do it, but God already did it. So I'm expecting something to happen. I'm trying to tell you tonight is God's economy is perfect. My wife would tell you, Every single time that we walked into an airport on deputation, it almost got to the point that it was embarrassing. I put over 195,000 air miles on deputation, and every time I went into an airport, somebody would walk past me, and they would shake their head like this, and they would turn around and come back and say, son, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I, I feel like I've got to give you the money in my wallet. Is that okay? And they would start pulling their wallet out and emptying their money into my hands, and I didn't know them. They weren't Pentecostal. They were people I didn't even know. Some of them would come to me crying they would say I feel God all over you you're the Pentecostal preacher I've been waiting on my flight's been delayed for hours while I waited on you here's the money God said to give to you I'm telling you somebody if you'll just trust God tonight if you'll dig deep and you'll reach in your pocket and you'll say okay God I hear what you're saying let me prove you let me test you and you just dig deep and start bringing something to the work of the Lord you're gonna find out that before you get home the blessing of the Lord will already be returned You remember when Harold Linder's church gave me 30000 on a Wednesday night? Do you remember that? Harold Linder's church, Wednesday night prayer meeting. We were in Winston-Salem before they had that new building, before it burnt down. They gave me 30000 and the church burnt down and they got a new building. I don't know if that was a blessing or a curse, but they did get a new building out of it. So uh, they, uh, Wednesday night, they, uh, we were having a prayer meeting, about 40 people there. That's it. 40 people. Brother Linder said, I just want you to get up, share some words of faith, and, and we're just going to pray for people to be healed. It was in that service that my wife, who had suffered with asthma her entire life, she was on inhalers and pills every single day of her life. In that service, God completely healed her body of asthma. Completely. <laughs> completely. Well, you know Brian Karecha, 
and Jill. Brian and Jill Karecha, the music ministers of Brother Linda's church, they had $1,000 in the bank, and they, they felt the Holy Ghost say, we're going to give $1,000 to missions tonight. So they got a hold of the little ATM things, and they gave their $1,000 out of their bank, and they had been saving up for a brand new car, and they, they just gave by faith and said, you know what? God will take care of the car if we take care of his man and take care of his work and take care of the, the things that need to be taken care of. God will take care of us and so they gave that thousand dollars about thirty thousand came in in cash that night in cash people just started giving by faith sacrificially well Brian and Jill left church that night drove home in their beater car and started driving down the road and all of a sudden that car broke down on the side of the road and Jill turned to her husband and said you know what honey let's call brother Linda back and let's get our money back and tell him we're sorry the, the just it'll have to be 29,000 we gotta we gotta fix this car and we can't we can't be walking places and brother Brian looked at her and said no we're gonna give to the work of the Lord and we'll walk home and when we walk home God will bless us So they walked home that night. 9 a.m. the next morning, they get a phone call from the Toyota dealership in town. And the Toyota dealer said, sir, I don't know why I'm calling you. Do you need a brand new car? Brian said, yes, sir, I do. He said, last night God dealt with me and said to call this phone number and give this man a brand new car of his choice. He said, you take a taxi to my dealership. I'll pay the taxi fee. And when you get here, you pick any car on my lot and I'll ride Write it off to you as a gift to the work of the Lord. Oh, come on. You ought to get on your feet and clap your hands and say, I believe in God's economy. Just stay standing. Go ahead and stay standing. Musicians can come. I'll wrap this up. God's economy will never, ever, ever fail you. Never. I have no idea how my wife and I give $1,000 a month to missions. I don't understand it. I, I can't comprehend it. I, I'm a missionary. I'm not rich. My mom and dad aren't rich. I came from a poor family. I, you know how it started, Bishop? It started one missionary at a time, one burden at a time. I just started taking on missionaries. Every general conference, I take on one more. Now we just took on our 21st missionary, and my daughters just took on a missionary each. And what I'm trying to say to you is, I don't even know how I can pay the bill to missions every month. But every single month, a pastor calls me out of nowhere and says, hey, Brother Robinette, can I send you $1,000? And I just say, oh, yeah, come on, I got to pay my missionaries. Come on, you keep on blessing, God. I, made a, I, I wrote a check that God has to cash. And so it was with my faith that I said, okay, God, I want to partner with missions. I want to be a part of the kingdom business. My wife gets so nervous at general conference every year. She does. Right before the mission service, she says, how many are you taking on, baby? And I, I'm always trying to figure out. I, you know what my dream is? I know this sounds crazy. This is my dream. My dream is to partner with every missionary in the United Pentecostal Church. That's my dream. We have a folder in our house by the door in our house that has every missionary we partner with so everybody who comes into our house we say hey there's our missionaries when you come through go ahead and bless them pray for them that, that's our missionaries we want you to pray for our missionaries oh I know this is different tonight I know but I'm going to tell you right now you can't have the revival you want to have until you'll make the sacrifices God is asking you to make. If this church would just buy into this vision, 
pastor began to talk to me today and I don't want to talk out of turn so you just yank my chain if I am but there's a whole bunch of churches that need to be started and he began to talk to me about churches from east to west coast of Florida that and all in the middle that that needed to be started in the 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 40 or was it 40 men how many 28 no no the ministers you're training the the, the training 80 80 in training right now 28 churches that need to be started and 80 ministers being trained and I, I began to sit there and my heart began to beat inside of me and I thought man man if I was in this church I'd want to buy into that right now I'd want to give money so we can buy a church wherever we need to buy one wherever there's contacts wherever there's an open door I don't want my pastor to be waiting on the vision when the money Money's in my pocket. I had the privilege. I had the privilege to, you know, every year on deputation, uh, uh, they let one missionary go to the to the field of Hawaii. And most missionaries don't like to go because you got to pay your own way and pay for your own hotels and 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 often they can't get your services and all this stuff at least that's all the horror stories we had but but man who wouldn't want to go to Hawaii that's just dumb go to Hawaii you know and so when they offered it to my wife and I we were like yeah we want to go to Hawaii we'll go we got to be with their their global missions director for a faith promise service and oh He's pastoring three churches that don't own a building because you can't buy anything there. It's all so ridiculously expensive. We did a faith promise service. Holy Ghost started moving through that place and people started giving sacrificially. And all of a sudden the pastor walked up and dropped the keys to his motorcycle in the offering tray and said I'm going to sell that and whatever comes in goes to missions and all of a sudden men started coming from everywhere and dropping motorcycle keys in the offering pan and said sell my bike pastor give it to missions sell my bike pastor give it to missions in a matter of seconds over $50,000 came in in cash not counting the motorcycles that that were going to be given to the work of the Lord. And what I'm saying is, there is a great vision in this church. A great vision. And I don't know what you're sitting on, what you're holding on to. Maybe you're trying to buy a motorcycle, a new car. Maybe you're saving up for a down payment on a house. And, and the Holy Ghost is moving on you right now saying, you give that to me and I'll give you something ten times better. I remember when my wife and I first went to the mission field. Seventeen years ago, eighteen years ago aimed to Belgium you know what we did to get to Belgium sold our house sold our car did a a uh, what do you call those things where you sell stuff on the yard uh, yard sale did a yard sale we sold all of the extra clothes we had all of our pots pans dishes in three weeks we sold our house our car all of the extra clothes everything we had we sold got $30,000 cash, sent it to headquarters to our missions fund, and left for the field. We had no thought about tomorrow. We didn't think about what happens at the end of these six months when we go back home and we don't have a place to live, don't have a car to drive, don't have clothes to wear. We didn't think about none of that stuff. We just said, you know what? If the Lord hath need of it, he can have it. I trust God more than I trust myself. And I can't save up enough to make a difference in my life. But I can give enough and I know he will make a difference in my life. From that moment forward, we have never looked back, never. 
our ministry hasn't stopped God just keeps opening doors God keeps providing finances and resources and opening more revivals and more thousands keep getting the Holy Ghost and churches keep getting planted and ministers keep raising up and we don't ever have to worry about our missions bill because God just keeps paying it because everything he gives us we give away I go to School of Missions next week. At School of Missions, they ask all the missionaries to make a new pledge to missions, take on new missionaries. You know that the, that the missions, missionaries of the United Pentecostal Church are, give more to missions than any single district? Did you know that? It's true. Missionaries. Next week, I get to take on more missionaries. I can't wait to get to School of Missions to see who God lays on my heart to partner with and to invest in and to, to make God have to figure out how to pay. I can't wait. I'll tell you right now, some of you are struggling financially. You can't figure out how to make ends meet. I'm going to tell you, number one, you better be paying your tithes. You pay your tithes, you won't be a struggler. You pay your tithes, God's going to bless your family. That's 10% of what comes in. You pay your tithes. That belongs to God. That ain't your sacrifice. That belongs to Him. Don't you dare think that's an offering. That is not yours anyhow. You pay your tithes. I pay my tithes. And I still give a thousand to missions. You've been struggling. You can't make ends meet. I'm going to tell you tonight, you need to make a faith pledge. A pledge that says, Pastor, I believe in your vision, and, and I'm going to give this to the Lord in the next 60 days. I'm going to make sure this comes in, because you know what? I want to be a part of what God is doing, and I'm going to tell you what God's going to do. If you will make a pledge by faith and say, God, I trust you with my finances. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of fighting. I'm trying to figure out where the next job's coming from, and how I'm going to get paid, and how I'm going to pay the rent and buy the groceries and take care of the school and get the kids. God said, prove me. Prove me. And I can feel the Holy Ghost right now dealing with people. God's dealing with people right now. You're sitting on money that the work of the Lord could use. You need to give it to the Lord right now. You need to give it to the Lord right now. You're saving up to buy something. You can buy it later or God will give it to you. Give it to the Lord right now. You got a motorcycle. You got a, a four-wheeler. You got something that's just sitting in your driveway. You ought to sell it and give it to the work of the Lord. Why? Because God wants to bless you. And as long as you hold on to material things, He can't bless you with the things He wants to give you. I believe there's a revival to be had in this city. My pastor used to always say, every great revival is tied to somebody's pocketbook. He said, when the people of God let loose of their money, the windows of heaven begin to open up and the revival fires begin to, to begin to blow and the embers of revival begin to be stoked and all of a sudden it's not just financial blessings but it's spiritual blessings and your family's blessed and your kids are blessed and your wife is blessed and your husband's blessed. I had a man in my church while you're standing had a man in my church desperately trying to get a job at the airport in Vienna in security. Him and his wife were just struggling to make ends meet. He was trained security man. He wanted a job at the airport. 
I said, what does that job pay, brother? He said, well, it pays about 70,000 euro. I said, if it pays 70,000 euro for the next three months, I want you to pay tithes on 70,000 euro. I said, you pay tithes on 70,000 euro for three months, God will give you that job. That great man of God started paying tithes on 70,000 euro. Started paying tithes just like that. He said, okay, pastor, I trust the word of God. Started paying his tithes as if he had that job already. Exactly three months to the day later, the airport called him and said, we know we've rejected your application four times. They said, but you know, we just feel like you're the right man for the job. Can we give you that job? But can we pay you 80,000 euro instead? What's God telling you to do tonight? You better not miss the voice of the Lord right now. Your life, your ministry, your blessing is hanging on the action you make right now.